Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll demonstrate the multiple ways that we can save and load a Keras sequential model. We have a few different options when it comes to saving and loading a Keras sequential model, and these all work a little bit differently from one another, so we're going to go through all of the options now. We've been working with a single model over the last few episodes, and we're going to continue working with that one now. I've printed out a summary of that model to refresh your memory about which one we've been working with, but just make sure that in your Jupyter Notebook that you have that model already created, because we're going to now show how we can save that model. All right, so the first way to save a model is just by calling the save function on it. So to save, we pass in a path for which we want to save our model, and then the model name or the file name that we want to save our model under with the H5 extension. So this H5 file is going to be where the model is stored. And this code here is just a condition that I'm checking to see if the model's not already saved to disk first, then save it, because I don't want to continue saving the model over and over again on my machine if it's already been saved. So that's what this, this uh, condition is about, but this model.save function is the first way that we can save the model. Now, when we save using this way, it saves the architecture of the model, allowing us to be able to recreate it with the same number of learnable parameters and layers and nodes, etc. It also saves the weights of the model. So if the model's already been trained, then the weights that it has learned and optimized for are going to be in place within this saved model on disk. It also saves the training configuration, so things like our loss and our optimizer that we set whenever we compile the model. And the state of the optimizer is also saved. So that allows us, if we are training the model and then we stop, save the model to disk, then we can later load that model again and pick up training where we left off because the state of the optimizer will be in that saved state. So this is the most comprehensive option when it comes to saving the model because it saves everything, the architecture, the learnable parameters, and the state of the model where it left off with training. So if we want to load a model later that we previously saved to disk, then we need to first import this load model function from tensorflow.keras.models. And then we create a variable, in this case, I'm calling it new model, and then setting it to load model and then pointing to where our saved model is on disk. So then if we run that and then look at a summary of our new model, we can see indeed it is an exact replica in terms of its architecture as the original model up here that we had previously saved to disk. Also, we can look at the weights of the new model. We didn't look at the weights ahead of time to be able to compare them directly, but this is showing you that you can inspect the weights to look and comparatively see that the weights are actually the same as the previous model's weights if you were to have uh, taken a look at those beforehand. We can also look at the optimizer just to show you that although we never set an optimizer explicitly for our new model, because we are loading it from the saved model, it does indeed use the Atom optimizer that we set a while back whenever we compiled our model for training. All right, so that's it for the first saving and loading option. And again, that is the most comprehensive option to save and load everything about a particular model. The next option that we'll look at is using this function called toJSON. So we call model.toJSON if we only need to save the architecture of the model. So we don't want to set its weights or the training configuration, then uh, we can just save the model architecture by saving it to a JSON string. So I'm using this example here, creating a variable called JSON string, setting it equal to model.toJSON. And remember, model is our original model that we've been working with so far up to this point. So we call to JSON. And now if we print out this JSON string, then we can see we get this string of uh, details about the model architecture. So it's a sequential model, and then it's got the layers organized um, with the individual dense layers and all the details about those specific layers from our original model. Now, if at a later point we want to create a new model with our older model's 
architecture, then if we saved it to a JSON string, then we can import the model from JSON function from tensorflow.keras.models. And now we're creating a new variable called model architecture, and we are loading in the JSON string using the model from JSON function. So now we have this new model, which I'm just calling model architecture. And if we look at the summary of that, then again, we can see that this is identical to the summary of the original model. So we have a new model in place now, but we only have the architecture in place. So you would have to retrain it to update its weights and we would need to compile it to get an optimizer and our loss and everything like that defined. This only creates the model from an architecture standpoint. Before moving on to our third option, I just wanted to mention a brief point that we can go through this same exact process, but using a YAML string instead of a JSON string. So the function to uh, create a YAML string is just model.toYAML instead of to JSON. And then the function to load a, a YAML string is model from YAML <laughs> model from YAML instead of model from JSON. All right, so our next option to save a model is actually just to save the weights of a model. So if you only need to save the weights and you don't need to save the architecture, nor any of the training configurations like the optimizer or loss, then we can save solely a model's weights by using the save weights function. So to do that, we just call model.save weights. And this looks exactly the same as when we called model.save. We're just passing a path on disk to where to save our model along with the file name ending with an H5 extension. So I'm calling this mymodelweights.h5. And again, we have this condition here where I'm just checking if this uh, H5 file has already been saved to disk. Otherwise, I'm not going to keep saving it over and over again. Now, the thing with this is that when we save only the weights, if we want to load them at a later time, then we don't have a model already in place because we didn't save the model itself. We only saved the weights. So to be able to bring in our weights to a new model, then we would then need to create a second model at that point with the same architecture, and then we could load the weights in. So that's what we're doing in this cell. I'm defining this model called model two, and it is the exact same model from an architecture standpoint as the first model. So if we run this, then at that point, we have the option to load weights into this model. And the shape of these weights is going to have to match the shape of what uh, this model architecture is essentially. So we couldn't have a model with five layers here defined, for example, and load these weights in because there wouldn't be a direct mapping of where these particular weights should be loaded. So that's why we have the same exact architecture here as our original model. So to load our weights, we call load weights and we point to the place on disk where our weights are saved. And then we can call get weights on our new model and see that our new model has been um, populated with weights from our original model. All right, so now you know all the ways that we can save various aspects of a Keras sequential model. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at the Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeplizzard.com. And check out the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.